Hey everybody, 8 Josh here, and today we're going to have our very first community showcase here on YouTube. This is something I've been doing over on my Twitch channel for uh, over a year now, and I was one of the first, if not the first, content creator on Twitch to do a community showcase for Planet Zoo. And I figured, you know what, I know there's a lot of people that can't always make the live stream, so let's bring this over to YouTube, and that's what we have for you here. So. We're going to take a look at some blueprints and we're going to take a look at a starter zoo as well. If you see anything you like, I'll have links to all of these in the description below, as well as a link to my Twitch channel. If you want to come check this out live, we do our community showcase every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern and uh, we would love to have you. But yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right. And first up, we have the Nautilus Education Center by Serial. And you're probably pretty familiar with their work. They do, uh, they have the amazing uh, Atlantis Zoo on the Steam Workshop. But this uh, this blueprint is actually part of a, a series between a couple different content creators called uh, Loma Park. So when you visit Serial's workshop, make sure to uh, go check out the links to those content creators so you can check out the zoo itself. It's called Loma Park, but this one man is all of their builds it is just absolutely amazing and i mean if you just look at it from like the top down like i uh, just love the way when i when i see people get like these really great curves like that on buildings it's like you, you know that there's uh some serious talent there in the building because it's not easy to do that but if we walk in we've got like tons of details just right off the bat and I love the uh, I love the text that's like built into the path leading uh, around the building. We have some exhibits as well as like custom uh, signs and billboards and things of that nature. I, I love also like so we have like the little uh, education speaker there, and I like that included like the buttons to like press it to turn it on and all that stuff. I feel like this is. Uh, you would you could see this in real life i feel like it just looks very realistic in my opinion also the color scheme is really really well done i love the uh this kind of like maroonish color i guess with like this light wood color but yeah just look at that like so many details it's so well done and then and then of course the path comes up this way and so we have the uh southern cassowary here very nice little custom sign and then a nice little uh, viewing area with the uh, animal talks which is a fairly new feature and then you have the the great habitat down there tons of great detailing lots of foliage which I love and of course a waterfall gotta love the waterfalls and then just looking up the building you get that perfect like spiral it's just very very well done and of course, it looks really good at nighttime too. Lighting is very much on point. And the building looks so good from the outside at nighttime. Like uh the way the way they got the uh lighting on this building, it just it looks like it the whole thing glows, right? Very, very, very well done. So yeah, that is the Nautilus Education Center by Serial. Up next we have the modular playground set by just goron and i know uh playgrounds are pretty common in zoos and unfortunately we don't actually have uh playground sets or anything in a uh, planet zoo so just goron made this awesome modular set with all the pieces you need to create your own custom playground and all the pieces are even separated. You have like slides, connections, platforms. Uh, tells you even how to assemble everything. Use 30 degree angle snap to rotate. And the cool thing is because all of these are individual groups. So if you don't want this uh, kind of maroonish color, you can just color it like a green and it colors every single piece. So uh, very, very cool. Highly recommend it if you uh, wanted to have a you know kind of little playground area in your zoo but maybe didn't want to uh actually create all the uh pieces yourself uh, but now you don't even have to worry about it just get this uh 
download this from the workshop and you're good to go. And here we have the giant otter habitat by Lisa. And uh, I really like this one because I, I love when habitats are not just kind of like a square shape. You, you have like, I mean, it's kind of round there, round there. You got a little section there. Lots of different like viewing angles. And in my opinion, this looks like a habitat you could see in a real zoo. It's, it's very, um, it just has that very like kind of realistic look. You know, you have like the concrete walls going around there. You have just enough plants. You have lots of rocks everywhere, which is uh, pretty realistic in zoos. A lot of zoos, you know, really, they don't always have a ton of foliage. As much as uh, we like to load up our habitats with foliage, uh, in real life, most zoos are very, uh, they have lots of rock in them. So I think this, this habitat is very well built. We've got like a nice little area down here and I like the little uh, like the little sliding door there so they can kind of separate the animals if they need to even comes with the water treatment facility there so you're, you're you're good to go as soon as you place it and next is another habitat that I feel looks uh, pretty realistic as far as like uh, something I I feel like I would see in a real zoo. Uh, this is the Western Chimpanzee Habitat by Squeeb. And I just really like this one because it has just all these different levels to it. I love, uh, you know, especially the animals like the chimpanzees, orangutans, and other animals that climb around. I love seeing the habitats, like, take advantage of that with, like, creating all these different platforms and, like, ways that the animals you know can get from platform to platform again got another good waterfall feature there lots of good foliage on the ground the shape of the habitat is also uh pretty unique you know again they could have just gone with like a simple like little square shape but uh, made the like really cool like curve there yeah just lots of great like little climbing structures the chimpanzees would be super duper happy in this habitat Next up is the giant tortoise habitat by also known as T. And what I liked about this one is one, I don't feel like the tortoises get uh, enough love in this game. You don't see a lot of habitats geared specifically towards them. Uh, but what's really great about this one is the building is like a tortoise shell and did a super good job with the uh, shapes there. Everything is very symmetrical and just very very well done and I'll show you here in a second why I really really like this habitat but first we're gonna jump in to the inside and it is a walkthrough habitat so you've got the uh, guest gate there and you've got it on the other side as well so your guests can just walk on through but yeah again it's another uh, you know pretty like basic habitat but you know, it does exactly what it needs to do. It provides everything that the tortoises need. I also like, it's not just flat in here either. You've got like a very subtle, like different terrain elevations there. So very, very well done. But like I said, what really makes this habitat stand out and why I wanted to show it off is if we look at it at nighttime, like how cool is that? with the uh, glass roof there and then the green lights. It's like, it it looks like it's a turtle shell. How cool, right? It's very, it's very green and glowy on the inside, but the way that they were able to achieve this effect with the lights and the glass, it, it, it really just, it stood out to me and I was like, man, I have to show this off. It's so cool, you guys. Next on the list is the King Penguin uh, slash Seal Habitat by Sorty. And this one, I when I found this one on the workshop, I had no idea that it was as big as it actually is. This is almost like a mini zoo in one habitat. This is just one, one habitat blueprint. And it is so, so well done. How they are able to manage like all this detail and a uh, number of pieces in a habitat, very, very well done. But it makes great use of the Arctic pieces. Just lots of detail everywhere. I love the uh, 
I love the the chain link there. Again, more more waterfalls. Uh, the the staff even have their own super secret area back here. Very cool. I love when like I love when the, like the buildings are built into the sides of like rocks and hills and things like that. Very cool. You've got a great little uh, like seating area back here, and of course you can come out here and uh, watch the seals and the penguins if you want to. And if we walk around, we got the great penguin statues. I think the uh, the path is actually supposed to be up here because you can see the uh, see the benches there. And if you got a great little area over here with a really massive waterfall, and I love that it the water kind of comes from like different angles and parts out of the rocks and everything very well done and if we come around down here so again the, the path is supposed to be up here now when i place these down i generally do not fuss with like the pathing you know i just generally don't uh go around and try to place the path around unless it's just like a really simple kind of like little square so like down here, there should be a path that goes down here for the tunnel. So you get like a little underwater tunnel area. And you pop around over here. The other thing I didn't do is, so when you place this down, so there's supposed to be water here. And in order to do that, because there is a under underground uh, tunnel here for the guests, you need to place the glass barrier along the inside right here on this side as well as on the side over here and then that will let you place the water in the giant pool here uh, again that's something if it requires placing the habitat barriers i generally don't do that when placing these down but i still think you obviously get a very very good idea of how this should look you got a great above uh, above ground viewing area over here I also really like they made like a like a little seating area over here. I love it. Animal talks every day at 3 p.m. I, I did something like this in Aurora Zoo and it's like, man, I would love if you could make seating areas like this actually usable. You know, you could do if you had a path down here, you could uh, you could hide a bench under here and they could use like the first, you know, s step but the guests won't ever actually walk up there, which is a shame. So I definitely, I would love to see stuff like that. I also really like the uh, little custom Viking ship here. Very well done. Yeah, so that's the King Penguin Seal Habitat by Sorty. Up next is the Koala Walkthrough Habitat and Koala House by Nathan Nett. And this is a great habitat because I love the, uh, I love the Australia pack and I, always kind of regret that I didn't really get to use it too much in my own build so I'm always really happy when I uh, find Australian themed blueprints on the workshop but I, I especially love these like little these little handmade baskets I don't know if the koalas can actually like get in here uh, the, you can see they did put uh, scent markers in there so they would definitely draw the koalas over here but I don't know if they would actually climb up there to get inside but I love the uh there's multiple viewing areas here so you have this little spot here and you have like a great little kind of custom cabinet here around the uh vending machines very very cool and over here I, I like these custom cabinets that's a really clever idea but then if you want to get a little more up close with the koalas you can walk through the habitat and and this habitat is oh it's so good I, you guys know me like I'm a big fan of just lots of foliage and rocks and it feels very natural they even have the animal talks over here and then I love the uh, kind of custom like little uh, climbing structure they made I love that it's uh, kind of round you, you don't see that too often I feel like so very well done there and again it just feels like it feels like a real kind of like little forest we have more of the uh, hanging baskets there a uh, nice little water feature and kind of a more uh, sort of shallow waterfall there. I love it. But yeah, I'm, I, I really like that these are like round. It's very, very cool. They did such a great job like just placing with all the 
all the different plants and all the rocks, how they are kind of just slightly sunken down under the ground like that. Very well done. Now this build is like a really fun build because I, you don't see, you know, too many, like too crazy of designs in Planet Zoo. It, or at least my first thought isn't to do these more like kind of crazy builds. I, I would think you would see something like this in Planet Coaster, you know? I feel like that would be fitting for like a theme park, but not so much as a zoo. So when I see stuff like this, I'm like, man, that's so cool. We need more stuff like this in Planet Zoo. So if you guys are watching this and you know, you've had an idea to make like some sort of like crazy building, definitely do this. But this is the Art Deco staff building by Gamer Dad and Z. And yeah, it's just a, it's a little staff building. But yeah, it's Art Deco. It's got tons of like just really bright, bold colors. I love the use of like the angles and the, uh, the round shapes there and the glass. I love like the little uh, potted plants area over here. And so this is a staff building. So they have like uh, the facilities here. So this is like a power, but they built it in a way so that only the panel is showing through. So it kind of looks like the panel is just attached to the wall here. And like the, the use of the security cameras there as well. Each, uh, each staff building has like a unique sort of design to it. And we still have like details on the building itself there. So, you know, no detail left unturned. And it's just really well done. And one of my favorite things, which I never think about in my own builds, is actually just stacking the uh, staff buildings on top of each other. So you get this like, you know, you may do like a two story building, but the second story is probably not usable. So this makes it actually usable. And uh, I just adds a little bit more uh, realism, I think, to it, even though this is a very funky design with the Art Deco and everything. Uh, it just, yeah, it just adds that little extra touch of realism to have a functioning second story. So I think that's very cool. Very well thought out, very well executed, and just very, very well designed. I love the, also, like the little staff area over here. You have like a nice little patio. And then some more details, more like little roof details up here. Just everything is just so well done. I like it. I want more stuff like this in Planet Zoo. So if you're watching this, make stuff like this because I want to see it. This build also looks really good at nighttime. Very, very good use of the lights, like the little light strips there. Very well done. The colors, just everything about the lighting here is just, it's on point. So if you're a fan of the Toy Story movies, you may recognize this one, but this is Pizza Planet by Alice. Uh, again, something that maybe wouldn't see in Planet Zoo. Again, this might be more fitting for like Planet Coaster. So again, when I see stuff like this in Planet Zoo, I'm always really excited because it's always just so much fun, but they did a great job. Did a great job making the uh, Pizza Planet building here. I love the, uh, it's like the planet with the ring and like the rocket ship on the outside. You know, I mean, it's cute, it's whimsical. Definitely would be fun in like a little kids area of the zoo. I love the uh, guards on the outside, the robot guards. And of course you've got like the planets up here and the solar system and the stars and it's just very, very well done. This one also looks really good at nighttime. Great job with the uh, lights for the sign there. And then the inside as well with the uh, stars and using these little globe lights are perfect for stars. A little uh, claw, claw machine there. I like that. I like the little claw machine, I like the little aliens. It's just, it's very well done. Very, very well done. And last on our list today, uh, you probably recognize this if you've played the game Jurassic World Evolution, but this is the Innovation Center Jurassic World by Maverick, and yeah, this is, this is amazing. It looks exactly like the building in Jurassic World Evolution, or also the movie Jurassic World, which is where it came from, but uh, just super well done on a uh, building that none of these are pre-existing shapes in the game. These Everything about this is custom. Like these little things, these are all made by individual wood panels and beams. Great use of the glass panels there. 
And then again, when you, when I see custom buildings that are round and like perfectly symmetrical like this, it's just, it blows my mind because it's not always the easiest thing to do. So when I see it, it's just like, man, I, I just have to, I have to point it out because it's very well done. But you have the great like plaza out here looking excellent with like the little garden and the uh, water fountains. I like the, uh, the like kind of little fake uh, bird exhibits in here. I like the, the like the little parrots there, but very well done with the scenery in here. It looks very, very good. If we ever get uh, actual birds in Planet Zoo, this could definitely be, uh, I could see this being turned into like a little bird aviary. But yeah, as we go in, so we got the big giant doors looking excellent. And then the inside was intentionally left empty so that you could design it how you want. You could, you know, feel free to add whatever you'd want to add in here. There's plenty of room to add a habitat or two depending on the animals, maybe three or four. Uh, it could also just be used as like a gigantic guest center. You know, you could load it up. There's already some uh, guest facilities in here, but you could definitely load it up with some more if you want. But there's just like so much detail around on the outside. I love the, uh, I love the uh, skeleton there. At first glance, if I were to look at this, I would say that this was just an in-game asset. Like. This, like, they had a crossover between Planet Zoo and Jurassic World Evolution and made this for the game. Like, that's how good it looks. Just super well done. And, uh, yeah, definitely recommend getting this from the workshop and checking it out for yourself. And whenever I do the uh, community showcase on stream, I always like to show at least one uh, like full zoo or starter map what have you and this one being a huge Simpsons fan I just had to include it but this is the uh, Simpsons map and iconic buildings by Survivor and it's very much a starter map but it has all the iconic buildings from the Simpsons TV show we have Moe's bar here complete with the uh, Duff truck and it has a has a very nicely done interior you have the bar and the, like the pool table and the seating area over there we have the quickie mart which is it looks probably as close to the uh cartoon version that you could get but completely detailed interior you've got like all the shelves of like you got like the little fruit you've got some coolers there with your drinks and whatnot very very well done i love it here we've got the uh we've got the crusty burger very well made sign i love the uh, custom crusty uh face there we've got the drive through and it's got a nice little seating area actually kind of reminds me of uh simpsons world if you've ever been to universal studios they have a crusty burger and you can go inside we've got the lard lad donuts we've got the cop cars in front of it because of course a Simpsons uh, town wouldn't be complete without the Simpsons house. We've got the car. The, they nailed the colors. You know what I mean? Like, it. they absolutely nailed the colors. And they even have Bart's tree house. So, yeah, absolutely nailed the uh, Simpsons home there. I love it. They even have Flanders house. We have the Springfield Retirement Home, also very well done. Again, nailed the colors, nailed like the awnings on the outside. You have the First Church of Springfield, and I love, I love the uh, that they included like they kept the humor there with the sign that quit stealing our letters. There's always like something humorous written on that sign in the show. Springfield Elementary, also very well done. There's also an interior for here as well. You've got the uh, you've got the uh, classroom here and the chalkboard. Bart must have did something wrong that he had to uh, write that up there. And I believe the church. I didn't show it, but I believe the church has an interior as well. Got a nice church area. We got Bart Simpson's soul. I don't really get the sign, but it's just funny. And of course, you couldn't have Springfield without the nuclear power plant. And uh, very well done. It definitely looks like. 
a power plant. Surprisingly, a lot of detail. I even like the uh, the pipe that's dumping the sewage into the uh, river there, because that's definitely something they would do at the power plant. But yeah, very well done. So if you, you know, it's whimsical. Again, it's more of a, it's a very themed uh, idea. So if you wanted to do like a much more kind of just really highly themed zoo, I think this would be perfect, especially if you're a gigantic Simpsons fan like I am. But there you go, you guys. Uh, there was, uh, this was our first ever uh, community showcase here on YouTube. Like I said, I do these uh, over, I do these live over on my Twitch channel every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, if you are interested in watching that, make sure to head over to my Twitch channel, give me a follow. If you have any blueprints that you would like to be shown, make sure to join our Discord server and submit your blueprints there. And otherwise, if you guys like this, I'll continue to do these videos for you here on YouTube. So as always, be sure to leave your comments, suggestions, and feedback down below. I am 8 Josh, and thanks for watching. See ya.